Good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Hazardous Manual Handling. I'm Stephanie Murawski from WorkSafe Tasmania and I will be your moderator for today. Before we start, we ask that you take a few moments to read the following slide about information received today. I will now go through a few items so that you know how to participate in today's webinar. We have taken a screenshot of an example of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your computer in the upper right corner. You're listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial in information will be displayed. You, have the, you will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presentation by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. Questions will be addressed at the end of today's webinar. We are recording today's webinar and recordings will be made available at the end of WorkSafe month. At the close of today's webinar, you will also receive a survey on the presentation. We appreciate you providing us with your feedback. I would now like to introduce to you today's uh, presenter, Ben Steike, Customer Experience Manager, Tasmania from IPAR Rehabilitation to present today's webinar, Hazardous Manual Handling. We also thank Ben for coming in to do the presentation um, while he's on his annual leave. Welcome, Ben. Thank you, Stephanie. Very kind introduction. Um, so just a little bit um, on myself. I'm a, an accredited sports scientist, um, followed with exercise physiologist, and I specialise in occupational rehabilitation. Uh, I've got a background in injury prevention from the mine sites of WA uh, and before that on breast cancer rehabilitation. Um, nowadays, I uh, perform a lot of injury management services and one of uh, the key items that I present on is hazardous manual handling. Um, we do a lot of workshops for various customers around the Tasmania region. So hazardous manual handling. How many times have you been told the right way of lifting or the correct way of lifting? Um, does it really work? Maybe it's a little bit old school, that term. Um, so we're now in a, in a world where we're saying that it's not about the right way or the wrong way, but it's about the strong way. So what we're going to learn about today is working within our circle of strength and I'll go into more detail into what that is. So do you know your strengths? Do you know your weaknesses? Do you know your fatigue points for a potential injury? These are all key in injury prevention. It's all about early intervention because as we all know, <clears throat> rehabilitation is quite hard. Prevention is a little bit easier. So when I say it's not about the right way or the wrong way, but the strong way, it's all about banking good behaviours. And there is a video that we'll have a look at that will go into that a little bit further. So manual handling definitions. Manual Handling. This module explores the manual handling tasks we perform as part of our work or personal lives. So what do we mean by the term manual handling? According to many experts, manual handling is defined as any activity requiring the use of force exerted by a person to lift, push, pull, carry or otherwise move, hold or restrain any person, animal or thing. Quite simply, it's doing something physical to something else. Jimmy, for instance, has a physically demanding job as a courier. 
He makes several deliveries of numerous items each day and often carries heavy parcels. Jimmy often strains many of his body parts and muscles by reaching awkwardly for the heavy cargo. Each time he carries a box from his van to the drop-off point, he's putting his body into positions that can result in injury. If you've ever been tasked with manual handling, you'll have heard the mantra, bend your knees, keep your back straight and the load close. Sometimes it may seem easier or quicker to ignore this advice, but we're going to show you why it's so important for the sake of your body to develop these good habits. Once you understand the postures that optimise your body's strength, you can gradually start applying them every day to reduce your chances of injury. We acknowledge that there's no right or wrong in manual handling, but there is strong, which is what we'll be focusing on during this training module. All right, so muscular skeletal disorders explained in a little bit more detail. So the most common cause of a muscular skeletal disorder is body stressing of the muscles, tendons, ligaments or joints. Most frequently from lifting, carrying, pushing or putting down. So in other words, manual handling. Manual handling can be anything from putting your baby in, in a car seat in the car to moving a wheelbarrow to making a sandwich. It's just a spectrum. The most severe and costly from a repetitive uh, from repetitive movements or over a long period of time. And the most common injuries reported by Australian workers, no surprise, lower back, shoulders and knees. So what is strong for life? So it's about understanding the three areas of risk. The first area, the personal area, that is what we have control over. So my personal area would be different to someone else's and that would indicate, you know, maybe someone's health or physical structures compared to someone else might be a little bit different. The task at hand, so what someone does for work. An office worker would have different tasks than a brickies labourer. And what environment? So are there any mechanical aids that you can use to make your job any easier? Then modifying your approach to manual handling activities, postures and movements, the workplace environment and the tools you use to enable you to comfortably and productively undertake your job. We'll use Dave as an example. He's made it to the office on time and is eager to start the working day. As a busy executive, he already has a lot of email awaiting his attention. Dave jumps straight into it and focuses on his work, surrounded by the technology he depends on to get the job done. The green circle depicts Dave's and your personal MSD risk factors. These are the things you physically control, how you personally behave, and decide how you care for your body and how you perform a task. The red circle relates to the task itself, which creates the opportunity for one or more of the three major manual handling risks, including force, as in forceful exertion, repetition, as in repetitive movements or actions, awkward postures, which can be static, non-moving, or dynamic, moving. The yellow circle considers the working environment where all tasks are carried out. The environment relates to equipment, plant tools, PPE, layout, design and environmental conditions.
So out of those three circles, we obviously have the most control over our personal risk factors. Second, we have uh, the most control over is the environment in which we perform our tasks and the tasks that we perform, they're usually pretty fixed. So personal risks and disc injury. <clears throat> so the display up there is showing a disc bulge or a prolapse pressing on the sciatic nerve. And the age range in which we find these type of injuries most prevalent are between 35 and 45. Why is this? Usually it's because between 35 and 45, we've got other priorities in life. We've got family commitments and the like. Um, and that means we don't have enough time potentially to take care of ourselves. However, our mindset when we're within this age bracket, we still think that we're invincible essentially. And that's when we find that we have the most back injuries. When you have a previous back injury, so 90% of the adult population will suffer at least one disabling back and neck pain episode. And then if we have one episode, we increase the risk of having another by four times. And if we have two episodes, we increase that, increase that risk by 10 times. So looking after our spine is quite vital to good health. And as you can see on the display here, body stressing. So we can see pleasure, comfort, discomfort, aches, soreness, and pain. Unfortunately, it's human nature that we wait until we are sort of aching or sore, and we call that late intervention. What we challenge everyone at the moment is to try and catch, catch it a little bit earlier. So where we can see the early intervention before we even get to discomfort or as we're approaching discomfort, let's try and change something before we get to that point where it's too late. Why do we stretch? So increasing flexibility will decrease your potential of having a sprain or strain injury. So performing postural adjustments and stretching on a regular basis will indeed increase your flexibility. So these are just some of the stretches that you will see. I won't go too much into that. How you can lower your risks. What can you do to make manual handling safer, more comfortable and less fatiguing? So we now look at the SSS movement principles, which is strong stance and step. How can you lower your risks? Now that you know how your musculoskeletal system works, let's look at what you can do to reduce the risk of causing it harm. A good place to start is with the SSS approach. SSS stands for Strong Stance and Step. To explain this in greater detail, let's take a look at Steve. He enjoys having a job that requires him to use his physical strength every day. Strong. Steve knows that he needs to maintain a strong upright posture that assists his back to retain its natural S curve. He's also aware of the fact that his joints and muscles are strongest in mid-range. He often tells people that he adopts the pose of a boxer or wrestler to best prepare his body for the physical task at hand. Stance. Steve uses a wide staggered stance or foot posture just as a boxer does with knees slightly bent to improve his overall stability. Another way to describe it would be simply to unlock your knees whilst maintaining a wide staggered stance. Step. Steve learned the hard way but now he never twists his back knowing all too well that his spine was not designed for twisting. Instead he always moves his feet to turn his body. Do you notice how his nose is always following his toes? And that is a great rule of thumb that we can learn from Steve. Try to keep your nose over your toes.
So when we talk about strong, we know that our spine is at its strongest when we have the three natural cur curvatures of the spine in place. So we wanna try and have our back as upright as possible. So we can create those three S curves. The joints and muscles are in mid range and we utilize our core muscles. When we talk about stance, uh, if I was delivering this presentation in person, I would get everyone to stand up with their feet together. Now that doesn't have much stability. If I was to give you a gentle push, your body would probably move one way or another. If you were to have a wide staggered foot posture, you would be a lot more stable and you might not move at all. So we want our knees slightly bent to improve stability. And as in the video, we want to unlock our knees like a boxer or a wrestler. And step, self-explanatory, don't twist your back. Our back wasn't designed to be twisted, so just make sure that we're following our toes, always moving our feet to where we're manual handling. So the rule of thumb, your nose should always follow your toes. Now we'll have a look at the forces involved in manual handling. In order to understand the dynamics involved in manual handling and the effective postures and lifting techniques on the spine and back muscles, we're going to imagine Alex's body as an excavator. We'll imagine Alex's arms as the boom, his pelvis as the excavator base or tracks, and his lower back and backside as the counterweight. Straight away, we notice a problem. Alex clearly doesn't have the same amount of weight behind him to counter the lift. If we simplify the excavator even further into a basic seesaw, we know that a counterweight that sits near the pivot point or fulcrum needs to be heavier to balance a weight on the other end that sits further away from the pivot point. Even more so if the other weight moves farther away from the pivot point. For exactly this reason, the excavator has substantial weights in the back that can balance a full load at full stretch. Other cranes and lifting devices may have the ability to move their counterweight as the weight being lifted moves to ensure perfect equilibrium. In Alex's body, however, this load does not exist and his lower back muscles need to create this counterforce. Now, because these muscles are situated so close to the spine or pivot point, the force in them can be extremely high. Because the force in these muscles is so high when you bend forward or lift a heavy object, the stress on your lumbar discs can be severe. And we just have to remember with um, the pressure on our lumbar discs, the muscles in our lower back they're some of the smallest, most intricate muscles in the whole human body. So when they're under that much duress, it doesn't take all that much for them to be damaged or injured. So we can just have a look at this display here, the forces on the spine. You can see that it's, you know, our spine is most at rest when we're laying down. We can see with, when we have one foot up on a box, it's less than standing up. Um, it just takes a little bit of the pressure off. You'll find that that's why most bars will have a little rail that go along the bottom. You put your foot up on that rail, you're more comfortable, you're likely to stay there for longer periods of time, drink more beer, everyone wins. When we see that at 100, it's less, it's less stress on our spine standing up than sitting down. That's a bit strange to, to think of it like that, but when we're standing up, our spine maintains the curvature and we have those three, the S curve in our spine. When we're sitting down, it compromises that S curve, putting more pressure on our spine. And then you can see as we go further up, a lot more forward reaching, a lot more pressure on those really small intricate muscles in the base of our spine. 
Extended seated postures. Uh, so what does this mean to me? If you're about to undertake lifting tasks immediately following extended periods of sitting or even laying down, you should ideally wait for a couple of minim minutes to undertake some gentle back extension exercises. And when you do lift, attempt to maintain the neutral spine position. So a lot of what we talk about is reversing our posture. As human beings, we are very anterior creatures. Everything that we do is in front of our body. So just doing a gentle back extension throughout the day after doing a task after extended periods of seating can really make a difference. So the circle of strength, this next video, we'll talk a little bit about what we, what we were talking about right at the beginning of the presentation. There's no right way, there's no wrong way, but there's a strong way. circle of strength. Now here's some really good advice. Stay within your circle of strength. Picture yourself being within a cylinder or circle that depicts your workspace, whether you're standing or sitting. The focus of your workspace should be as far from you as where your fingertips reach when your elbows are at your sides, bent at 90 degrees. If you stay within this circle, you'll keep your back upright the load close and you'll need to bend your knees to move up and down. That's what your knees are there for after all. This will prevent you from overreaching with your arms and bending your back. Remember that by moving your feet on the spot and making sure your nose always follows your toes, you'll prevent your back from twisting. By staying within your circle of strength, you are banking good behaviour by placing less stress on your system. This is like building up lots of credits, so when you have to go outside of your circle, you can use some of the credits you've already banked. So I think the most important takeaway message from this presentation is that of banking good behaviours. So there's no right way, there's no wrong way, there's a strong way. So the more, sometimes, when we are manual handling, we have to go outside that circle of strength. Sometimes there's no way around it. But if for every other task that we've done that day, we've made a concerted effort to stay inside our circle of strength, that means that we've banked up those good behaviours. So when we do need to hop outside of that circle of strength, it's not going to be as damaging as if we were outside of that circle for the rest of the day. Now, I hope you took something out of this presentation, um, probably more so the videos than, than my dialogue, but I would just like to open the floor up now to any questions about any of the slides that we've gone over or any questions about hazardous manual handling in general. Thank you, Ben, uh, for your presentation. And, and as Ben just said, if there are any questions that you would like to ask, then please do type your questions uh, into the questions pane um, and, uh, and we'll be able to answer them. I do acknowledge that there may have been some challenges with the sound in respect to the video. So I do apologise to the audience and, and to Ben as well, if, if that certainly was the case. Um, in respect to the recording that we will be providing um, later on the WorkSafe Tasmania website, um, I'll have a chat with Ben in respect to potentially having those, those videos available. So we do have a question that's come through, uh, Ben, and the question is, what did the numbers in the graph of, a, sorry, in the back of a graph positioning relate to? Are we talking about the gravitational forces on the spine where were, one person was laying down, one person standing, sitting? Is that what we're talking about? Um, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> Do that's okay. Then? I think that that's probably what, um, what we were talking about. So they're just the that, that number does not relate to a tonnage or anything like that. That's just 
I guess, relative to all the other postures. So the lower down that spectrum, the less gravitational forces were on your spine and the more towards the right or the higher that graph, the more gravitational forces are on that spine, the more at risk you would be at having a, a sprain or strain injury, especially on the spine. Thank you, Ben. Another question, can you please explain the concept of banking during lifting? Yeah, of course. So what we are talking about when we're saying we're banking good behaviours, if we've got quite a manual job and for that entire day, we are failing to acknowledge healthy postures, we're moving outside of our circle of strength, um, we're going to be putting ourselves at risk. Now, if we can have a look at those tasks and design them or move within our circle of strength, when we do those tasks, we're not putting the body at as much risk as if we go outside that circle of strength. So the more tasks we do inside that circle of strength, we bank up good postures so there's less duress on the spine. And then, you know, when we do that, you've probably heard of the expression, the, you know, the um, straw that broke the camel's back. That there is a really good example of if we've been going outside of our circle of strength all day, we go to tie our shoelaces up, bang, our back goes. But if we were staying within our circle of strength all day to the best of our ability, banking those good behaviours, we tie our shoelaces up, our back's probably not going to go bang and have an injury. So the more we can say, stay inside that circle of strength, bank those good behaviours, and by banking good behaviours, that means putting less stress on the spine throughout the course of the day, the better we're going to be. Thank you, Ben. Another question, what period of stand time is recommended for a majority seated employment? So there's lots of different literature on this particular question. Um, so again, there's probably no right or wrong answer, but what I always suggest um, to our customers at least is trying to create, a, in a perfect world, it would be 50-50. Um, I'm a big advocate for standing um, desks. Um, so if you're in an office environment, standing for half an hour, sitting for half an hour, that there is a perfect world. Unfortunately, it's not a perfect world. So what I'd be suggesting is um, getting up and moving at least once every half an hour. Um, but yeah, definitely you, you wanna try and get as close to 50-50 as you can. Um, that's me speaking as an exercise physiologist. I believe that postural variety is super vital to creating good health and looking after yourself from a manual handling perspective. Unfortunately, some workplaces just don't allow for that. If you're um, you know, an accountant and you don't have a sit to stand desk, you, you, know, you probably can't stand for half an hour as well as if you're a, if you're a plasterer you're not going to be able to sit down for 30 minutes. So it's just about doing the best that you can and trying to change that posture as much as possible. All right, thank you, Ben. Um, as I mentioned, there, there will be a recorded version of the webinar on the WorkSafe Tasmania website. However, Ben, we do have a question asking, will there be a printable version of the presentation sent out? I, I can make something available. So Stephanie, I'll um, I'll get in touch with you after this, and we can we can work something out. All right, that's fantastic. Um, there's there's still some there's still some time to um, to put forward uh, any questions if if you do have anything that you would like to ask Ben. Um, and again, acknowledging that. Uh, there were a few issues with the videos and um, I'll discuss with Ben after the presentation in respect to uh, potentially having those available with the recorded uh, webinar as well. So given no other questions have come through Ben, um, thank you for your presentation. Um, so 
We thank Ben Starkey from IPAR Rehabilitation. We also thank everyone for attending today's webinar, Hazardous Manual Handling. There is still time to register for other WorkSafe Month webinars and events, so please head to WorkSafe tasmonth.com.au uh, to get further information and uh, register for other events and webinars. Also, as a reminder, at the close of today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation. We do appreciate any feedback that you can give us. On behalf of WorkSafe Tasmania and our presenter, Ben Starkey from IPAR Rehabilitation, thank you for joining us today for the webinar, Hazardous Manual Handling. Thank you.